Okay, this will be a review of solving exponential equations by equating the bases. Just to refresh on the basic idea, um, the idea we're going to be using here is if our bases match, then the exponents are equal. So that's the kind of basic idea we'll be using. Let's just take a look at four different examples. First one is 5 to the power of x equals to 25. And as we just mentioned, we're trying to make our bases match. So right now I have a base of 5 here on the left, a base of 25 on the right. Um, so I'm thinking, can I rewrite both of those using the same base? And in this case, yes, we can. Um, and more specifically, I can rewrite my base of 25 in terms of my base of 5. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the left-hand side of this equation alone. Rewrite 25 as 5 squared. Once we've done that, our bases match, therefore the exponents are equal, and we pretty quickly arrive at our conclusion that x is equal to 2 in this example. So again, I only had to rewrite one of my bases to make it match the other base. This next example, we're going to have to consider rewriting both bases. So I have a base of 9 and a base of 27. Um, I can't express 27 as 9 to some power, so I have to think about rewriting 9 as well. Turns out that 9 and 27 are both powers of 3. So let's rewrite 9 as 3 squared, and of course that's still being raised to the power of 3x minus 1. And then I'll rewrite 27 as 3 cubed. So it takes a little bit of practice with numbers to powers, but that comes the more you work with them. So at this point our bases are equal, but I'm going to take one more step of cleaning up the exponents. When I have 3 squared raised to the power of 3x minus 1, I'm really multiplying my exponents. So distributing 2 to both pieces here, we'll have 6x minus 2 as the new power on 3. And distributing on the right, we'll have 3 to the power of 3x plus 6. Okay, so 3x plus 6 on this side. So again, my bases match, therefore 6x minus 2 must equal 3x plus 6. The exponents must be equal. So we just have a simple linear equation that we'll work to solve here. Um, we'll go ahead and move all our x's to one side, all our numbers to the other side, We'll just kind of do that in one fell swoop here. 3x will equal to 8, dividing both sides by 3. The value of x will be 8 thirds. It's a little bit more complicated than the first example, um, probably mostly because we had to rewrite both of our bases in this problem. But again, it's just once those bases match, we're setting the exponents equal, and we're good to go. So now let's take a look at two more that will involve um, fractions. And kind of our thought process here will be that a negative exponent will be involved. So I have 6 to the power of x equals 1 over 36. Um, maybe you see 36 and you think right away that that's 6 squared. That's great. That's a good starting point. So let's go ahead and, and take that step. Just rewriting 36 as 6 squared. The problem at this point is that I need both of my bases to be in the numerator. So Using our rules of exponents, we know that we can move 6 squared up to the numerator so long as the exponent becomes negative. So 1 over 6 squared is really the same as 6 to the power of negative 2. At this point, our bases are matching, and we can just draw a conclusion from here that x is equal to negative 2. And then that one would be completed there. So again, this one just involves rewriting one, of the, one side of the equation. And then as a final example, let's look at 4 to the power of x plus 1 equaling 1 over 64. Um, again, we're working with the fraction on the right-hand side. So after considering for a little bit here, you're going to think about 64, and you're going to think about this base on the left of 4, and maybe you start writing down a few things. 4 to the first is 4, 4 squared is 16, Turns out that 4 cubed is 64. So there are just some thoughts on the side there. 
Using the same technique we just saw then, let's go ahead and rewrite 1 over 64 as 1 over 4 cubed. Using a rule of exponents now we can say 1 over 4 cubed is the same as 4 to the power of negative 3. At this point our bases are equal, therefore our exponents are equal. So x plus 1 must equal negative 3, in which case x must equal negative 4. So that would be the conclusion for that one. Um, and just to note, I haven't shown the check for these last four examples, but any of them can be checked. So that's a good exercise for yourself to think about that part. Hopefully that helps a little bit with solving exponential equations.